Hi, I am Filippo Pierdicca and welcome to the tutorial about the realization of a photorealistic chandelier with F-Storm render and 3ds Max. Let's start setting up the environment. I have used uh, an HDRI map found on hdriheaven.com so you can open the panel of the render setup of fstorm render and open the environment tab here you can load the the hdri map and then just put it on the material editor here you have to set it as a uh, spherical environment and then you can immediately start rendering using the RT mode in order to find the right position of the map. In this case I have found these coordinates as I love to see the, the painting on the side of the, of the render. As you can see here, the, the chandelier has a totally flat material. As I have set a white common material for all the objects. We can start shading the bulb. The bulb is, we can use just a very simple glass material base glass material with a diffuse of zero and an IOR of 1.5 reflection 1 reflection 1 and all, both the color set on white now that we have the bulb completely transparent with the glass material we have to hide them for a while and we will set up the lights of the sh of the scene we will not use standard lights we, do, we will not use the f-storm lights but we will use the objects that are inside the bulb and we will give them a material an f-storm material with a self illumination so let's turn on the emission the direct illumination and we give them give it a white color and the power of about 1000 let's see what happened what i can see is that the the color is n doesn't have the mood that i would, would would have this is because we have a totally white light um, I want to give it a warmer sensation so we can give it a more yellow color yeah something like this now we can shade the chandelier what I want is a completely transparent and red glass so let's take an f-storm material with no diffuse a totally white reflection and a totally white refraction What we need to, to give the red color to the glass is the absorption. Through the absorption we can give the color to the glass. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Okay, what I see is that it's not exactly what I want to achieve. 
because it looks like too much transparent. Maybe it's because of the distance, the volume distance is too wide. We can try to make it smaller, for example, 5 cm. As you can see, it gets more red and less transparent. Maybe less. Mm -hmm. Here you can see it's very red now. But I want it more. Yep. Yeah. As you can see, the the definition of the model is, is not enough, so we need more polygons to, to describe this uh, this mesh. So let's close it and let's add uh, open subdivision modifier. Yes, now we have a smoother smoother surface. We can shade now the decorations we can find here and the bulb holders. I made them with the same material, a uh, metal material. So we can select them and isolate them and give them an F-Storm material. In this case, we are going to make a metal material, as I told you before, so we don't need a diffuse level. And we can set an IOR of 20. Usually this can be a, a good uh, parameter for a metal reflecting material. So reflection 1, color not absolutely white, so something less because we don't have a mirror in this case no refraction and let's talk about the the, the glossiness okay we are not going to uh, control it with by a number but we will use a map the map I'm going to use to control the glossiness of the surface is the F-Storm Dirty Map. Uh, I use it because I want to give the sensation, the feeling of a surface used and touched during, during time. And I think that uh, this, this map can help me to achieve the, the result that I have in my mind. What I usually do to, to help me to understand where will be the the, the, the more glossy areas, um, what I do is usually put the the map on the diffuse channel. So in this case, I open the F-Storm dirt map on the diffuse. I put down the reflection channel and grow up the diffuse one. I run the RT mode and as you can see we have the dirty map describing the areas in the corner but it's not enough I want something more strong and more dark so I grew up the radius because one centimeter is not enough and I'm going to, to do something as long as the, the the object is and it should be about five or eight centimeters mm, I think that the problem is given by the distribution the distribution the the, the more the distribution is uh, is high. The more I have a blurred effect on the on the surface, so I put it down at the minimum level. And as you can see, we have more 
defined areas, but it's still not enough. I want something stronger and to achieve it I grew up the contrast. So I try two, no more, three, uh, something more. Yeah, mm, yeah, maybe something like this. Once I have the effect I need on the diffuse channel, I drag and drop the map on the reflection glossiness channel. Put down the diffuse and grow up the reflection. Something is wrong because what I expected by my shader from my shader is that in this area I should have a more rough reflection. I can see it but there is not enough reflection and as I know that it should not be a problem of the shader I think that uh, there is a problem with the settings in the f-storm and maybe it's because of the GI clamp the GI clamp tries to simplify the calculation of the of the ray tracing and of the GI and in the relative with the relative um, it is depending on the on the point of view and on the camera and usually I have not the control that I would have so this is something personal someone may may prefer to work with the relative one but they prefer to work without it so I turn it off and here we have we have the 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 effect that we were expecting to have now that we have the effect we were searching for we can add some detail on the surface uh, in order to have a more um, noisy and not so perfect uh, metal and F-Storm has a very useful procedural map that is F-Storm Scratches F-Storm procedural map as we can see create random and uh, chaotic scratches on the surface here they are too too powerful and I will make them less visible I put them on the bump map and we have a very useful tool that give us the possibility to divide the number that we put in the in the spinner to divide it for example by 10 cubed so as you can see now the the effect is is more soft maybe too much so what I can do here is for example is to put four centimeters yeah this is the effect that I was searching for small scratches visible on the specular more visible on the on the specular on the highlights let's talk about the shading for the crystals we isolate them as usual run RT mode so we give them an F-storm shader and so we don't need the diffuse as usual IOR for a crystal maybe 2 is a good parameter reflection 1 and white reflection again 1 and white glossy completely glossy and 
we can try to give to the crystal a little bit of dispersion. The dispersion effect give us the the result of the spectrum of the light inside the inside the, the, the crystal inside the, the object. Maybe this is too strong. As you can see, we have the the blue, the red. So the, the white light is splitted into the different color that builds light. But this is too much. We can try zero. Yeah, 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 something like this. And here too, we can add some detail with F storm scratches. Let's divide it ten cubed and maybe the same parameter of before may be good if we want to go faster we can render just one crystal and we start to see the scratches on the on the surface maybe for the crystal is too much so maybe two would be better yeah two is okay now that we have completed the shaders for the scene we can start talking about the kernel settings for the optimization of the rendering with f-storm We can find the kernel settings into the render setup. Let's see each parameter. The render samples, we can put a very high value. In this way, we don't risk to, to stop the render before that it's, it's done. We don't need to put a limit to the time of render. The ray threshold is this parameter is okay it's, you, this is the base parameter and for our scene is uh, is the good one while for the light samples for maybe two less this is because we are using mm, a lot of lights and moreover as they are geometry they need more sampling than the um, the f storm base light so maybe we if we use a light sample of 16 is the maybe the good one for us for the scene we are going to to render uh max depth we are rendering a lot of refraction and uh, reflection reflection so uh, eight maybe two less and usually when I try, when I make this kind of uh, rendering, I put a depth of 16 so that I am sure that I will not lose any effect of refraction and reflection. GI clamp, we have seen it before and this is okay by now. Now we talk about the adaptive sampling in particular of the noise threshold um, this is probably the most important parameter in order to achieve an optimization of the of the rendering and in order to have not extremely long time of uh, of render this is the way i usually try to find the right value for the noise uh, noise threshold so let's start the 
RT render and I select an area that I will take as a, an example for the wall render. Now I have a threshold of 0 0.01. I open the noise level and I see that it's all, it's all red here. So once I achieve the amount of noise that I think will be the good one for the entire image, for example, in this, this area is good, I go to next level and I find and I grow the parameter at, until the area that I was watching gets completely green. I go back and check. Maybe this one. Then I stop the render and I start it again. And I check when it gets green, it's still red. Now it's green. Yes. This means that the wall render will have this amount of noise. Obviously, I can have much less noise than this, but I have to be careful because render time may grow a lot trying to achieve a better level of noise. The minimum samples is referred to the render samples. This means that if I turn it on, this means that the 0.1% of the render samples that I've set is the minimum where it will calculate the whole image without taking care of the noise threshold. This means that we will be sure that until it will get the 0.1% of the render sample, the whole image will be calculated. Then, once it has calculated the more of the 0.1% of the render samples, it will start, start to consider the noise threshold. A good use of the noise threshold will grant us a good balance between result and render time. This is because once we see the areas getting green, it will stop to calculate those areas and we calculate only the, the red one. So we are getting close to the 1000 samples and as we can see it's all red and soon we will see the green areas, here they are, the green areas is where it has achieved the 0.1 level of noise and it will stop to calculate these areas focusing only on the red one. Now Let's set up the camera and the depth of field. So, turn on depth of field. I usually usually use the. Hold on. So, now let's set up the camera and the, the depth of field. 
turn on depth of field I usually use the F number as I feel more comfortable coming from real cameras and this should be a good value for the effect I want to achieve blades I like the hexagon one so I put six blades and the focal distance I can use the tool that is into the f storm render rt that is the set focus just picking the area I want completely focused as you can see now this part is focused and the rest is blurred according to the depth of field now we can talk about the tone mapping so uh, I can say that there is not a wrong way of using tone making this is just about your your tastes so what I'm going to show you is the the parameters that I used to achieve the mood of the render that I wanted but you can obviously change it about your according to your your tastes I'd like to add a bit of vignetting maybe more Yeah, one may be, may be good. Thank you for your time. See you soon.